It's over. It's finally over. It's Christmas Eve. The holiday shopping is done. Um, I have a day off tomorrow because it's Christmas! Merry Christmas, everybody! And um, also Happy Hanukkah because it's also Hanukkah. And whatever other winter holidays happen now. Uh, I know there's like maybe six of them. I don't want to go rattling off. Um, but yes, finally the winter ordeal is over. I'll be able to get back to making toys on a regular basis. Um, I decided to ease into it by um, doing some mods to a figure I already made. Just um, I'll show some pictures of this. It's 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 seriously just an afternoon project. It's not like it took a lot of time. But um, okay, then I'm gonna actually get back into commissions and another another Hyrule Warriors figure. Uh, so that being said, let's get back to Sonic Boom. Um, what was the title of this episode? Let's see. It was. I can see Sonic's fear from here, with C spelled S-E-A. Um, okay, let's talk about a game mechanic that became a major character trait. In the very first Sonic the Hedgehog game, there was a stage called Labyrinth Zone. It was a flooded maze. Uh, when you jumped into the water, you basically sank like a stone. It also greatly hampered Sonic's movements, and you could only live for about 20 seconds before you would automatically die with the most terrifying music sting that to this day can can cause me to get heart palpitations when I hear it. Um, yeah, and unless you get bubbles. Um, it wasn't until the third game in the franchise where they would come up with the water shield that would allow you to survive underwater. Um, but yeah, everything was more difficult in this stage. It was one of the most difficult stages in the game. Uh, aside from Scrap Brain Zone, which is innumerable traps. But, um, yeah, fun fact, I didn't actually beat the first Sonic game until I was in college. In fact, I didn't beat any of the Genesis Sonic games, except for Sonic and Knuckles, until I was in college. Sonic and Knuckles is the only Sonic game I ever beat as a kid, because it was the only one that didn't have an underwater level. <laughs> oh, I know, that sounds kind of sad. Um... But yeah, um, <laughs> although I didn't, the reason I didn't beat Sonic 2 was because I couldn't beat the Death Egg robot as a kid. I actually did manage to get all the way to the last stage and even beat, um, and even beat Silver Sonic as, as a kid. But I just could not beat the, the Death Egg robot for the life of me. Anyway, we're not talking about the video games. Okay, so, because of this, um, uh, it became part of established canon that Sonic cannot swim. And by the time the Sonic X anime came out, this had kind of evolved into Sonic having full-on hydrophobia. He's terrified of water. Um, and they never really came up with this in, um, in, in, in the Sonic Boom cartoon. Like, like actually, like, this trick actually wasn't even a thing. In the Adventures of Sonic cartoon, back in 1993, Sonic would totally swim. I mean, and he never had to swim. He never had to swim in um, in the Sonic Saturday Morning cartoon, and I don't think it ever came up in um, I don't think it ever came up in Sonic Underground either. It wasn't until the Sonic X anime that they'd really written this game mechanic of not being able to swim into an outright "I'm horrified of water" kind of thing, which they used to hilarious effect several times. It got to the point where Sonic would fall into a puddle that's so shallow that he's not even waist deep, and he starts thrashing around like he's about to die. <laughs> Uh, so, they basically did that here. Yeah, so, it's official, Sonic's hydrophobia is still a thing in Sonic Boom. Which, you know, I like. I mean, it, it's nice to give Sonic a weakness, a, a, a humanizing trait like this. Because, you know, he's always, he's always super badass all the time. He's always confident and cool and all that stuff. Uh, so this episode begins with Sonic and his friends beating Dr. Eggman again. And Dr. Eggman laments that if they were working on a points system instead of, an, instead of a final victory thing, he probably could have won. Um, so, uh, so, the, so Cuba and Norbert try to comfort him when he realizes Sonic, um, that he can exploit Sonic's weakness when he looks into his cup of tea. Sonic can't swim and is afraid of water. Therefore, let's, um, let's, let's confront him underwater. Then you won't be able to fight him there. Uh, so they say that they need to go to a musical montage, so uh, they, they do this badass rock music montage of building a machine with Cuba and Norbot done up in full hair metal mode, playing the guitar and the drums. It's kind of cool. 
Well, then it turns out that he was just building a washing machine to wash his lucky shorts. <laughs> and now, once my lucky shorts are clean, then I can get to the then I can get to cleaning, uh, get get to building a machine that'll take out Sonic. Uh, so that being said, um, uh, so uh, so there's uh, Sonic and, and and his friends are all sitting at the beach. Because although Sonic is terrified of water, he's okay with beachfronts. I'm assuming as long as as it's a nice shallow beach at the edge, like not like if it's a steep drop off, like you want to get at the Jersey Shore or or some beaches in Long Island. Um, but uh, so so uh, all of a sudden uh, there's this huge explosion while Tails is trying to teach Sticks chess uh, when <clears throat> when um, when an octopus falls on Tails' head. Instantly improving um, uh, Styx's enjoyment of the game. Uh, then a bunch of fish start raining down. Uh, they make a they make a quick joke. Um, um, Holy mackerel! It's raining minnow. Hallelujah! Har har har. Uh, they catch some fish in a bucket, um, and that's when they that's when they take the plane out to sea to see what was happening. And um, tails find some weird disturbance underwater. And Dr. Eggman sets up a periscope with the speaker, saying that he's that he's got an evil plan going on, and they and if they want to stop him, they're gonna have to come down there. Uh, so everybody, including including the paragliding knuckles, is all gung ho, like, "All right, we're gonna go down there and confront you." And so I was like, "Well, let's not be so hasty." I mean, I mean, we. Uh, tails notes that there's seismic disturbances under the water, which will cause a massive tidal wave that'll destroy the village, and it'll take about eight hours to happen. Okay, I mean, yeah, if you're going to create a geological disturbance, you're not exactly going to... I mean, it's not like you have an earthquake machine that you just flip a switch and, and all of a sudden... And all of a sudden... I mean, I mean, they're not fracking. Um, no, this is, uh, this is an earthquake machine. It's going to take time to create a seismic disturbance. So Sonic says... Um, Sonic tries to say that, that, uh, that instead of... In, instead of going down there, they, they have eight hours. They can take some time. Like, get, get something to eat at Medburger so they don't have to fight an empty stomach and, and stall, stall, stall. So uh, they capitulate to Sonic and they go to, to Medburger. <clears throat> and Sonic is doing everything he can to try and avoid going in the water. He's saying, like, don't you have to wait three hours after a meal? Um, uh, you, what? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't stalling. I hate stalling. In fact, let me list all the things that I hate more than uh, that I hate as much as stalling. <laughs> and um yeah so so yeah he's stalling so they try to get him to confront his fear of the water um this this calls uh, for Sword the Eagle um wait no Sword the Eagle Tail says that they develop, he's developed highly developed wetsuits that allow them to go underwater um but, uh, and they put Sonic in the suit but they can't get him to go in the water um uh, I do recall they said something in the first season about about taking uh, swimming lessons at the community swimming pool, but Sonic refused to take them because they wanted to put him in the beginner class with all the little kids. And those little kids can be so cruel when they detect weakness. <laughs> Knuckles says that the way to do it is to beat up the biggest one in the yard. Amy comments that that's what, how you survive prison. He's like, not if you let it be. I can imagine that when Knuckles was, was younger, he was probably a, a little kid, and he got bullied, so he, he bulked up, and that's why he's so beefy today. And also, he probably skipped classes to beef up, so that's why he's dumb. <laughs> oh, wow, I just developed a head cannon. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so they get Swordy Eagle, because remember, Swordy Eagle does do motivational pep talks. And he says that he's a, a world, he's a renowned, award-winning journalist. And they confront him all like, just because they give them to all participants doesn't mean they're not awards. So lovely. Um. <laughs> oh god. Uh. So Sword the Eagle tries to convince Sonic that there's nothing to be terrified about with water. So he, he to demonstrate, he takes, he, he dips his finger in a glass and flicks a drop away, and it. It goes into an electrical outlet, causing a short, which leads to a fire, which causes everyone trying to put it out uh, until Amy gets out a fire extinguisher and covers everything in foam. Uh, so, you know, there's nothing to it, to it but to do it. So they all get in the wetsuits and they all go in the water. And when they're underwater, um, the game mechanics kick in because they, they their movements are hampered underwater. Amy can't swing her hammer because of the water resistance, Knuckles can't punch, and Sonic, who can barely doggy paddle, finds himself not really able to use his speed. 
Plus, Dr. Eggman is heckling him. Like, like I'm surprised he can come down here with the millions of tons of water surrounding you in every direction. Yep, no air down here. Not even a bubble. Haha, <laughs> video game mechanic reference. Um, so he has a whole bunch of crab bots come, and they, and, uh, and nobody can fight, can really fight effectively, and Sonic gets pinned under some collapsing rocks. Uh, although Sonic did manage to get the, a bunch of crab bots tangled in a kelp forest, so yay. He did something before he got captured, and one of the crab bots sniffs his oxygen hose, leading him to drown. Uh, Tails has no spare hoses, but he has one of the cooling, the cooling hoses from the plane, which they can use to patch it. So Styx brazenly jumps, dives into the water without a, without any kind of gear, and she swims down, getting her ankle tangled in um in in a in a piece of kelp for a while, and and uh, until she manages to rip it free, and she gets the hose to Sonic to Amy, uh, so she can swim back up to the surface. Amy gets the gets the hose in, uh, so that Sonic can breathe again, and they and and they're back in the game. Um, Eggman brings out his shark badniks, which look awesome. They look a lot cooler than any of the water-themed badniks from Sonic 3. Um, and, uh, but Sonic manages to get on top of them and redirect them into his wave machine, causing it to knock over, facing the opposite direction from the village so that it won't, it's a, it won't present a danger when it explodes. Um, also, Eggman's submarine has been damaged, so he can't really maneuver very well. Uh, so they all get to the surface and escape before the thing goes off, and it sets off this giant tidal wave that takes Dr. Eggman away. Um, Dr. Eggman flood, uh, ends up flooded up on his own beach. He says, huh, good thing I updated my flood insurance policy. Um, uh, although, I gotta make a note. Pointing the device in the other way wouldn't work. When you create a wave in the ocean, it propagates in all directions in a circle. It, I mean, you might be able to make to argue that, that the wave would be bigger in one direction if you pointed it in the other direction, but every action has an equal and opposite reaction. You're going to cause kickback that'll cause a, a wave to go the other way. You drop a stone in a pond, you're going to create waves that go in all directions. It's like if you throw the stone so it hits the water at, at this angle, you're going to create a wave that goes that way and nothing comes back this way. So, no. You have to disable the wave machine. You don't just point it in the other direction, okay? But still, like, it's cartoon logic, not real science. Although, I will point out the detriment, you know? <clears throat> um, so, uh, Sonic says that he has absolutely not got over his fear of water. If anything, he's, he's scared of water t ten times more. Um, you know what? Yeah, I, I kind of like the idea that the hero doesn't necessarily have to conquer all of his fears to, uh, at the end of the episode. Like, he faced, he, he dealt with his fears, but that doesn't mean that he's over them, you know? Like, this is, this is a realistic arc. Like, like, I managed, like, like in Finding Dory. Like, at the end of Finding Dory, she doesn't get over her memory deficits, but you see how she works past them. Like, and, and it's a, and it's a lot bigger character growth, and it's more realistic. The kids watching at home know that they don't have to feel bad because they don't get over their fear after confronting them one time. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the lesson of the day. Uh, so, yeah, this episode was pretty fun. It, it referenced some, some cool game mechanics. It brought to the front Sonic's hydrophobia, which is a nice little weakness character trait. Um, and it, and it had him confront his fear without conquering it. Which, which also is strong character growth. So yeah, character growth, uh, reference to the game mechanics, um, as always, uh, the animation looked good. I like the designs of those shark badniks. All around good episode. So uh, this episode continues to please. Um, this is Waking Angel 2001, and now um, it's Christmas Eve, and I probably shouldn't be talking into this camera. I will now go out and join my family. I will see you next week. Merry Christmas, everybody.